Hello, I'm Joel. And I'm Alex. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Commander's, Commander's Journey. Journey. The place where we discuss our favorite format of magic, Commander, from the perspective of a new player and an experienced one. This journey is for new magic players interested in Commander. So today we got another deck tech for you. Um, is this a budget tech or is this not? This, non- this is a budget tech under 100. Um, That's our version of budget. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> By the way, I don't know how you do less than that. I always struggle to keep these things under a hundred. It just it just gives us more respect for Mitch, who can keep a deck at fifty dollars <laughs> and still make it fun and competitive. There you um, go. But yeah, so this is a card everybody who bought a box of M twenty one would have. You know, I thought this one too is going to be very popular. Um, I, I did try my best to try to separate this deck out. Uh, with this commander, you do get a little on rails. Um, the deck wants to be played a certain way and do a certain thing. Um, for us, because this is M21, that mm-hmm. card is Rin and Seri Inseparable. One red, green, white for a legendary creature, Dog Cat. Whenever you cast a dog spell, create a 1-1 green cat creature token. And whenever you cast a cat spell, create a 1-1 white dog creature token. And for a red, green, a white, and tap it, Rin Seri Inseparable deals damage to any target equal to the number of dogs you control, and you gain life equal to the number of cats you control. It's a 4-4. So it's a rather unique uh, commander in that it's pretty much a double tribal commander. So if you get a lot of dogs and cats out there and you're able to hit and swing at things, you're going to get value from this commander. As long as you're casting them, and yep. that's why it cares about dog and cat spells, um, that's the key thing. And uh, Joel, if you'll allow me, I'm going to go on a, a one-minute rant on how there are no good dogs in Magic. Oh, boy. As long as you allow me to talk about how many good dogs there are in the actual world. Okay, that's, that's great. <laughs> Honestly, I, I love dogs. I'm a dog guy. But I'm telling you, in Magic, there's like four playable dogs. Like, I kind of scrounged to make seven. Um, there are four legit playable ones that you want to play. Three of them, I think, are from this set. Like, it is... Yeah. They just and started giving they, some attention to them. Yeah, even though they made hounds dogs, it's still that. It's still that. You know, you look at old hounds. I don't think they're great, most of the old ones. Uh, the Ionok from um, uh, back in Khan's Tarkir block were hound people, but they had two different things. They liked Megamorph, which does not work with the commander at all. It cares if you cast a dog spell, and if you cast them as a morph, doesn't do you any good. Doesn't mm. help with the commander whatsoever. Yeah. So that went right out the window. And then uh, there is a small plus one, plus one counter at the end of them. And that I did add to the deck to make a couple more dogs playable. So you got a little more variety versus just the really cat-focused version that I think a lot of this deck will be. And it's still that to some degree, but I, yeah. I tried my best to make it a little more even. I think it'll get better as time goes so on. So we still got a lot better cats than dogs in there. But, Without question. But both Alex and I are dog people. We love <laughs> dogs in real life. And after I saw this, I thought of a dog I had because uh, growing up, um, our dog loved to hang out with cats. And kittens and cats would play with us. So you got dogs and cats working together. So hopefully this synergistic deck will have your dogs and your cats. And when you think of... Well. I was going to say, when you think of both dogs and cats <laughs> playing together well, you think of shapeshifters because yep. that's how you make both marks at the same you time. You definitely don't think of the name <laughs> Rin and Siri. I really think, you know, it's kind of a little bit obvious the other name they're trying to go for, <laughs> Rin and Siri. They weren't dog and cat, Rin and Stimpy, right? No. I, I don't know I what don't, they were. I don't. I don't. It, I think it, trying to apply logic to that show okay, is a bad I'm, choice. Okay, I'm done. Um, let's keep <laughs> moving on. So let's go right into it. Um, let's talk about what's the game plan then with this deck that you built, Alex. So uh, straightforward. Um, basically, you're going to cast, especially a lot of cat spells, but some dog spells. You're going to make a lot of tokens. You're going to use those tokens to swing in. Uh, it does have a small plus one, plus one counter addition to it. Um, that way too. Not only does it go a little, uh, goes quite wide, but it'll go a little tall too. Um, but mostly it's playing off that tribal synergy. All right. So, um, let's get right into some of the best synergistic game plan cards. Um, start here with Mirror Entity. It's two and a white for a creature shapeshifter. It's got changeling, so that means this card is every creature type. So it meets both a dog and a cat. Yes. Which is valuable here when you cast it, because then you get both triggers. Um, so for X, until end of turn, creatures you control have base, power, and toughness, XX, and gain all creature types. It's a 1-1. One, one. 
So this is beneficial. Um, this is probably the most standout changeling shapeshifter card that exists in the deck. Uh, there's a decent amount of them just because they trigger Ren and Siri for both ends where mm. they get both tokens versus just one of them. Um, the main thing that's really nice about Mirror Entity is it does give them that all creature types as well as uh, potentially give them a little overrun effect. Um, and that matters because especially there's a lot of cats that care when you swing with cats. Yeah. Uh, certain effects will happen, and this way it'll trigger the dogs doing that as well. Yeah, getting that getting that um, wide uh, theme going on here, it's nice to pump everybody up a little bit. And then this other card here, you also have... I mean, let me let me try and pronounce this. Quasali? Is that Quasali right? is what I've always heard it as. Quasali Slingers. Four and a green for a creature cat warrior with reach. Whenever Kasali Slingers or another cat enters the battlefield under your control, you maybe destroy target artifact or enchantment, and it's a 3-5. So it's pretty much cat aura shards. It's on a mm. creature. Um, I didn't put aura shards in the deck because I thought this card was there, and I don't think you need necessarily two of that effect. Um, you could definitely add it if you wanted to, but this is such a great card. Um, and then yep. it cares when it enters the battlefield. So all the times when you're casting dog, you'll get a trigger off of this because the cat token. Uh, when you're casting cat spell, of course, you'll get it on its own when the cat enters the battlefield. So uh, every time we're playing creatures in this deck, this will start triggering. There you go. Um, also in here, I guess one of the more known and, and bigger cats in this is um, uh, Arabo, Roar the World. Is that right? Yep. Arabo? Yep. Um, it's three uh, green and white for legendary creature cat avatar with eminence. So at the beginning of combat on your turn, if Arabo, Roar of the Wild is in the command zone, so this is if it's your commander, or on the battlefield, another target cat you control gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. And then whenever another cat you control attacks, you may pay one green white. If you do, it gains trample and gets uh, plus X plus X until end of turn where X is its power. It's a five five. So uh, similar to the how that that came as one of the commander decks in 2017, I believe. Okay. Uh, this was the uh, face commander for it uh, for the cat deck. Um, it's basically re it's in the deck because it's it's going to be a win condition basically mm -hmm. on its own. Um, that's how it played out in the actual cat deck was um, it'll pump up the cats. You'll just dump all of a sudden on one turn a, a bunch of mana onto a cat um, and then take out a player. Um, yep. That's how it wants to do it. And it does pretty much the same thing. It's a little more go-wide route, but this way, too, you can also um, use it to you know get take out a player or just get some extra damage in. And then another really, really good synergistic card for this deck is Cathar's Crusade. Three white, white for an enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Cathar's Crusade is just a great card. Um, this, but this is what I mean when we did uh, the plus one, plus one counters thing. That mm -hmm. way, we not only do we go wide, but we go a little tall too, and this helps with that. Where as you go wide, you'll go taller. It helps with the small plus one, plus one counter things that some of the dogs do have, mm -hmm. um, as well as you know. It makes more tokens. Whenever you make tokens, you're going to get the trigger off of this. So pretty much every time you cast something, you're going to get two Cathar's Crusade triggers, which will go way out of hand really fast. Yeah, it's definitely, if you got a lot of things on the battlefield, it can be it can be a nasty, nasty enchantment. Really good card for this deck. So let's talk about um, the next category, um, some of the best synergistic ramp spells. And you got one card in here, um, Oreskos Explorer. For one and a white, it's a creature, Cat Scout. When Rescos Explorer enters the battlefield, search your library for up to X Planes cards, where X is the number of players who control more lands than you. Reveal those cards, put them into your hand, and then shuffle your library. It's a 2-2. Two, two. So um, this one, there's just actually not too many ramp cards that play into the strategies. Almost all the ramp cards are your go-to Cultivates, your Kodama's ones, yeah. Rage. Um, nothing crazy. Oreskos Explorer was just the one that also happened to be a cat or a dog. Um, it, it even goes into your hand, but what is nice is just clean out the deck a little bit of your planes. Um, mm -hmm. You make it so you're not drawing into them as much, so uh, it'll keep you know the lands consistent, which is something. It's not nothing. And, well, that's the fun part of when you're playing tribal or when you're playing certain themes. You're going to get cards in your uh, within your ramp category, your draw category, and your removal category. They're unique. You wouldn't play Oreskos Explorer necessarily in a lot of other decks, but... When you got a cat travel theme, you got a cat scout. It's gonna go get you some planes. So that's that's always fun. It works perfectly. And then the next category, let's talk about card draw. Some of the best synergistic card draw. 
And this first card here is a really good card. And the more and more, every time I see this card, I'm realizing how much better it is. I, I, I think I have exactly the same thing. Bro. Every time I see it, it's a return of the, maybe I should buy a few more of these. I'm thinking, exa- <laughs> I literally read my mind here as we're doing this. We were just talking about uh, <laughs> cards that are just going to go up in value over time. Um, but this is return of the wild speaker for four and a green. It's an instant. Choose one. Draw, um, draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control. Or non-human creatures you control get plus three, plus three until end of turn. You know, this one specifically, I return the wilds. I say it every time it comes up. It's a draw spell that's also a win condition, right? Yeah. If you don't have a bunch of humans in the deck, this is always worth putting in. Um, and then on top of it, you know, you have that flexibility. We're earlier in the game. It's a draw spell. And if you just happen to hold on to it for a little while, uh, you'll be able to take out a player or two when you uh, do the second ability. Great card. Um, this other one. In card draw is Keeper of Fables. This fits perfectly with your tribal theme. It's three, a green, green for a creature cat. Whenever one or more non-human creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. It's a four, five. Yeah, same thing. Uh, This is a cat that draws you cards. Um, This is great. You can easily probably sneak in with... Uh, you know, an extra a token here or there as long as you're not lo- willing to lose them. Uh, mm-hmm. Just feel free to swing in with three, lose one or two, and get in, draw a card. Um, I mean, really, it's it's fantastic. And then um, one of the better card draw spells you want in any deck that makes a bunch of tokens, um, it's Skull Clamp. For one generic, it's an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one, negative one. And whenever equipped creature dies, draw two cards, equip one. Same thing. You're making a bunch of 1-1 one, one tokens. Every time you're casting a cat or a dog, uh, you can equip a soul camp, do it, draw two cards. It just really gets better and better and better. All right, so let's get in the next category. Uh, our best synergy when it comes to single target removal. We got one card here. Of course, you're in white, and you know, you're know you going to have some really good removal. But this one just works with the deck really well, and that is Crib Swap. It's two and a white for a tribal instant shapeshifter. It's got Changeling. So it's really interesting. It's an instant with Changeling. Yes. <laughs> so the card is every creature type, but it's an instant, mind you. Um, and it says Exile Target Creature. Its controller creates a 1 1 colorless shapeshifter creature token with Changeling. So um, it's, it's Exile Target Creature, it, you know, so it's fantastic, a single target removal. And again, this is single target removal that will trigger uh, Ren and Sari. It yes. counts as both a cat card and a dog card. And since it happens off a cast trigger, it doesn't care if it's a cat creature card or a dog creature card. It cares if it's uh, what type of card that is. And this is every type of creature as a instant. So you got an instant for three that's going to exile a problem on the other side of the battlefield. And it's going to get you two tokens. Yes. So for three mana, you're exiling and you're getting two tokens if your commander's out. I think it's a pretty good deal. It's a great deal, you know, and uh, <laughs> sometimes you don't want to heal them with swords. You don't want to do those kind of things. This is an alternative. It just gives them a 1-1 one, one instead, so it's not even bad on that side of things. Exactly. And then uh, the next category in the removal um, uh, area is board wipes. So um, the one we put here is Hour of Reckoning. So four white, white, white. It's a sorcery that has Convoke and to destroy all known non-token creatures. And Convoke is your creatures can help cast this spell. Each creature you tap while casting a spell pays for one generic mana uh, for one mana in that creature's color. Yeah, so um, our Reckoning, again, will save your tokens. Um, it will kill the commander, sadly, but uh, just trying to get those board wipes that won't hit you as hard as your opponents. That was the synergistic as we're going to get, so yeah. um, playing into that side of things. Yeah, it, and it's not just hitting non-token things. You can also use your tokens to convoke this and get it out for three white exactly. a lot of the time. Especially. You can get it and pay for all of it, because you can pay for with the white mana as well, as long as you're typing white creatures for it. And all the, uh, I believe, actually double-check for me, Joel, uh, on Rin and Sari, uh, I believe the cats come into play are whites. Uh, no, the dogs are white, the creature token. So all the dogs will help you pay for the white mana, and then you can play the cats for the colorless if you wanted. There you go. Um, just some uh, uh, some good synergy. I mean, there's going to be other boar wipes, of course, in white, um, and some good ways to remove th- things in, in green and red. I think the deck has four board wipes. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't quite hit the five. Uh, but I kept it around four because it was such a creature-based deck. I didn't think it was wise to keep on having so many board wipes that were just yeah. going to sit in hand. Um, but I did want you, of course, to have enough that you have an out uh, when you need it. 
Exactly. So let's get into our last category um, uh, for the deck, and that is Recursion and Protection. So the first card up here is Naya Charm. It's um, red, green, white for an instant. It says choose one. Naya Charm deals three damage to target creature or return target card from a graveyard to its owner's hand or tap all creatures target player controls. I'm going to be honest with you. Of all the three color uh, charms that exist, mm -hmm. Naya Charm is my favorite. Yeah. It is... A win condition and creature deck, so it taps all creatures target player control, so you can pretty much kill a player if you want, yep. um, pretty much outright. Or you can play it as if it's an eternal witness, or as it's a, uh, re uh, yeah, I yeah. believe, regrowth, uh, where you get to return a card from the graveyard back to your hand. Um, and it, it also is a single target removal if you need it. I mean, it really hits all the uh, things that you could possibly need it for, and it's very, very flexible. Yeah, and I love that tap all creatures target player controls when you're in a go-wide deck. Because you got a bunch of one ones, you don't always want to swing in on some bigger creatures, but to tap them down and then just to come in with your with your army is also doesn't matter very if they have hexproof or anything like that either. It's tapping them all. It does not care. If they yep. have indestructible. It does not care. Yeah, it's going to do it anyways. Yep. Go go get those big old creatures out of the way. Another charm that fits really well in this is the Boros charm. So for a red and a white, it's an instant. It says choose one. Boros charm deals four damage to target player. Or permanent, uh, you control, gain indestructible until end of turn. Or target creature gains double strike until end of turn. So mostly this is in the deck for the permanents you control, get indestructible end of turn. Yes. Um, uh, I, I, at the time period, was still less expensive than Heroic Intervention, so I put a Boros Charm in there instead, and it does have a little more flexibility. Mm -hmm. So it does have there. The double strike is not irrelevant. It does help. Yes. Um, but it's a little more unique when that's going to come up. Um, but uh, really, it's in there just to protect everything, and it protects all your you know tokens. So if you go wide, you try to board wipe, you can protect it. You're looking pretty good at that point. Yeah, I, I mean, I remember you telling this maybe last year when I was building a deck, um, how good the charms were because of how flexible they are, and you can see that. And in key, and having both of these in there really helps because it gives you maybe you do need to just deal four damage and, and finish off a player, right? Or you do need to give that creature double strike to remove another creature or something. You have that flexibility, although, like you said, the main reason you're going to have this in here is to give uh, your permanents indestructible. As long as you can use a come up a scenario where you use one of the functions most of the time, the other ones are just gravy, right? Mm -hmm. And the charm specifically, if you're looking at budget or you're looking as a new player at the deck or even as an experienced player, you know, as an experienced player, it, we even forget that flexibility is so key in a commander deck especially the more casual the group is especially the you know not so combo heavy the group is the more flexibility that the charm has the more powerful it becomes and then the ability to have all those different options really sets it apart where all of a sudden you look like you have all the answers just because you have a lot more charms in the deck than your opponents yeah it's it's, it's really one card it's kind of fit in the role of maybe what two or three different cards would want to do which also helps with like just having that advantage. You don't have to go trying to draw those cards. You kind of got the answers in your hand, like you just said. And our last card in this category we'll talk about is a new card, um, and it's a dog. We got another dog. We yes. got another dog here. An actual good dog. <laughs> and it's not a shapeshifter. <laughs> it's Selfless Savior. For one white, it's a creature dog. It says Sacrifice Selfless Savior. Uh, another target creature you control gains indestructible until end of turn, and that is a 1-1. One, one. So um, this will just give something indestructible. It's a dog that has another use. You can use it. You're often probably going to use this to protect the commander. Yes. Um, but uh, it's in there. It's a dog. It triggers what it needs to do. Uh, the other reason I want to talk about it is a small note, and hopefully this will be just a stupid little thing I say and won't matter after a while. Uh, <laughs> what we post on Architect, our decks now, uh -huh. um, and uh, what has happened is for some reason when m21 came up they did not put this card in yeah uh, in that so you'll notice that the deck is 99 cards uh hopefully this gets solved by the time we release this episode um and if this is what it's missing is selfless saver i don't know why it's not on the website but i sent in a bug report uh, they haven't got back to me and uh, we'll go from there yeah, there you go. There's your. There's one of your good dogs. One of your few good well, dogs. There's there? again. There is legitimately like I may I stretch it out so like there were seven good dogs, right? And like four of them were good, that were really good just by themselves. And again, three of them were from the satchel. Yes. <laughs> Almost half of the good dogs I used, mm -hmm. and I stretched for the other half yeah. were from the set. Like 
I just can't explain. They, I think it'll get fixed over time. I think they're going to focus on dogs yes. after this, and that this will be again, maybe need to be adjusted at the end. But as of right now, yeah, the dog side's going to be lacking. There you go. Well, then as new dogs come out, you just just start shoving them in your deck, and make it better, um, and brewing it up. So here we go. Let's. Uh, I mean, we already kind of talked about the wing con, right? Yeah. So you got Naya Charm as a wing con. You got Return of the Wild Speaker. You can use Mirror Entity even as a wing condition. Um, yeah. Anything that's going to pump up all your uh, tokens, yeah. help them get through, uh, those are going to be the key win conditions here. Yeah. Um, it is, again, trying to go wide and tall, uh, more wide, but as you go wide, you'll get the tall bonuses. Yeah. So it's a little bit of both, and you'll eventually overwhelm the board. Um, but, yeah, just anything that helps you get through is a win condition here. Yeah, so if, you, if, you're, um, if you're cracking some packs of... Uh, uh, jump starting and you happen to pull a crater hoof behemoth you yes just, just shove that in here if this was not a hundred dollar budget <laughs> budget deck, deck, deck yeah crater behemoth easy upgrade boom slap it in yeah. fantastic choice um <laughs> but yeah actually, keep it keep it keep it reasonable though <laughs> since we're talking about it, easy upgrades as well uh yes. you can throw mirari's wake in here um great again I, uh, it's great card fantastic card i didn't surprised by how much it went up since i last uh, grabbed a copy for myself mm -hmm. so um, it didn't make quite make the cut but that's a great choice uh brimaz is probably uh it's just the most expensive cat you could probably add it was too expensive for what the deck was because it gets played in older formats um but also fantastic cat uh, put it in the deck if you happen to have an extra copy um, Thornbite Staff is a great one. It helps out Rin and Sari's activated ability, where I, in the deck currently there's no great way to take advantage of it yeah. uh, for multiple ones. But with Thornbite equipped, every time you use it, it'll untap, so you'll get to keep on using it for as much mana as you have. So you always have that as an option. Um, and last, uh, we threw in Flawless Maneuvers, if you happen to have an extra one. Yes. Uh, that's the creatures you control get indestructible until end of turn. Uh, same thing like Boros Charm, just a way to protect everything you have and this one doesn't cost anything if you have rin area yeah I, I love i love that whole uh, all those cards it just it's free if your commander's out honestly there, there's gonna be a point where if you have one it's almost always worth the easy upgrade to throw it in but uh this one specifically since you know the set just came out uh, commander 20 yeah you throw it in if you happen to have it i think was worth uh, pointing out um so the last thing we're going to touch on uh, is weaknesses. I like talking about weaknesses in my decks that I build um, that happen. Uh, this one has only two really key ones. Um, the main one that's going to mess it up, and you see I already have some ways to get around it, but of course if you run into too many, is repetitive board wipes. Mm -hmm. It's going to eventually lose steam. If Ren and Siri get too expensive, of course you're kind of a little more dead in the water. Yeah. Um, ways to get rid of all your uh, tokens. It's, it's going to be hard to come back from it. Yeah. So ways to protect it with the, with some of the indestructible methods and stuff to try and keep your things on the board. Exactly. Things yeah. to protect it are key. And then the other one is because we're looking at just dogs and cats, uh, they don't fly very often. Dogs no. and cats. You had something here with Reach. But... I did. Uh, one of the uh, dogs that, again, I uh, went out of the way for. Actually, yeah, you're right. Quisali Singers that we talked about has Reach. And one of the dogs I had in the deck that... Um, Helps with the plus one plus one counter thing again. I stretched out to make it. it. Says everything with the plus one plus one counter gains reach. So there is stuff in the deck to protect from flyers. Yeah. But there's not as many. And of course, I don't know if there's even any actual flyers in the deck. So a flying um, dog or a flying cat. Can we just call it like those. a um, uh, a flying horse? A flying, <laughs> Pegasus. Yeah. A flying <laughs> dog. What would they call? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Well, well, there you go. Ren and Siri inseparable. Um, you got cats and dogs hanging out together. Um, this is a fun deck. It's not a super powerful deck, but I mean, you're going to get this card if you open a box. And this, I think, is just a really good budget option. And again, like you said, Alex, if they continue to focus on dogs, maybe, you know, in the next few sets, you got some really good dogs. And maybe even a few more cats you can shove in here and really make this a fun and powerful deck. If you like your pets and you uh, are looking into, you know, wanting to build Ren and Siri because you mm -hmm. love your pets so much, you know, yeah. this is a great way to do it. Our, our uh, deck tech, um, again, just because there's not many dogs, the power level isn't quite where I want it to be. Um, it's close, though. So yeah. I think you can get away with it right now. And then as more dogs get added to magic that are better, this deck will look better and better over time. And the other thing I wanted to point out, too, was that, um, you know, uh, 
for this one specifically too, I think this is more of a fun, hey guys, I got this deck. It's a little more on rails because it's very straightforward what the commander wants to do. Yeah. But what I do think is the case too, even though it's more on rails, um, mm -hmm. I just didn't see too many deck techs of it out there. I, I really, uh, we were, I was looking, I thought, hey, let's do this. I haven't seen too many. So all those people that, you know, want to build it, newer to the game, our target audience, uh, let's do it for them. Let's build something that maybe they can use and take advantage of and have fun with. Yeah, and the more, I mean, and a lot of times the more stuff you're doing, the more tokens you're making, the more cards you're drawing, all that kind of stuff makes it a lot more fun to play at least i found yes yes uh more variety and more options always better always a good thing always a good thing all right well that'll do it for um this deck tech and this week so thank you guys for tuning in hopefully you guys um, um are doing well playing magic opening a lot of packs and saving up your cash for the end of the year don't forget the best commander sets coming out the it's end of the year coming out <laughs> and uh, if you buy the deck use our affiliate link please. um please please do again we're a small channel uh, anything at this point helps us uh, keep the lights on keep us going keep us rolling motivates and really makes us feel like we're giving something back to the mtg community which we really appreciate you guys when you show your support thank you very very much yes thank you very much and for all my new players out there i'm a new player been playing only for a year now um, love this game and if you want to leave comments talk to us we'd love to um, have conversations with you we just want to um, just be a part of building this community um, yeah thank you guys so much and um, we'll see you next time see you